Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to some more Zero Hour and welcome back to another edition of 5 Times Pro Tips. It's a series of videos I've made on YouTube where I basically show you 5 quick pro tips, literally as it says on the tin, and show you how to uh, increase your chances of winning games when you're playing online multiplayer, or whatever to be honest. So here today with the first one, we're going to show you how to get more XP when you're TNTing USA. So most people in a GLA versus USA game, they'll probably go in, they'll TNT over a power, a barracks, they might drop off a terrorist and hit a dozer if you've got decent micro, or you're probably going to hit a supply or a war factory. So a supply or a war factory is probably the most common thing, but here in this example, we're just going to use the barracks, the power, and the supply, but of course it would also work with the war factory. In fact, it'll be even better with the war factory because you actually get more rangers from it. So what I'm basically going to show you how to do is get more XP from your TNT kills, because a very important part of GLA is getting to that level 3. When you get to level 3, which is 1500 XP, Currently, we're on zero because the game has just started. But when you get to 1500 XP, you then get the bounty money. When you get the bounty money, you can place down a CC scaffold, let's say there, and then you can cancel it, and then you will automatically be getting all the bounty money. So, I mean, that's probably a tip in itself. But then whenever you're picking off units, you can either get 5, 10, or 20% of the value of the unit that you killed. So, for example, let's say you're getting 20% of a dozer kill. That's $200 because a dozer is, is 1,000. So the, 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 the mission here is to try and get you to level 3 as fast as possible. So we're coming in, in here with a TNT. Now, what a lot of people will do, they'll TNT a building. And for a power kill, you'll get 101 XP. It's two terrorists to kill power. So you kill the power, and most people then will probably ignore those ranges, and they'll probably go on and kill other stuff. But what I'm going to show you is actually these ranges are a nuisance anyway, because they can actually be picked up by the Chinook. And they could actually be combat dropped into your key buildings. Let's say that one, for example, or maybe you've got this area um, and you can combat drop these buildings. They're so annoying, especially like on Tournament Desert, it can actually lose you the game. So why not kill the useless rangers? You probably think, yeah, they're useless, but because of the combat drop reason that I just told you. But also every ranger you kill is getting you another 21 XP. So you see there, I'm on 122 now. It was on 101 before. I kill another one, I'm now on 143 and I vetted my tech. So, I mean, it's a win-win-win it's a situation. I've vetted my tech. I've gained more XP, which, by the way, is a 42% increase compared to just killing the power. I've gained 42% more XP by killing those rangers. And he can't combat drop now. So, it's a no-brainer to be killing those rangers. I'm going to show you here now another kill. Now, if you kill a dozer or you kill a worker, you're not gaining XP from it. And you're also not gaining XP from a scaffold kill. So when you're doing this, just be mindful. I'm not going to gain XP from this, but it is still going to screw over the enemy big time. Like that, that there has cost the enemy $1,800. My terrorist cost $200. Here now with the with the barracks is exactly the same maths as the power plant. So I got 101 XP for that kill there on the barracks. I'm going to kill two rangers. Probably get a vet three. Oh, no, not vet three just yet. But we've killed another uh, 143 XP. So 143 at 143 is 286. Okay, now we're going to show you the same example, but with the supply. So the supply gives you more ranges, but in terms of percentage, it is less of an increase, but it's still going to give you a lot. So when you kill the supply, it's going to give you 201 XP. Four terrorists to kill that, by the way, and two terrorists to kill a barracks and two terrorists to kill a power. 13, I believe, to kill a CC. <laughs> Pro tip for you there. Okay, so we killed that. We gained uh, 201 XP for the supply kill. Three rangers spawn. 21, 21. And then we are going to get this last one just with a terrorist. Kill that. And now we've killed a few buildings and a few rangers and we're on 550. So the total for the supply was 264, which is a 31% increase by killing the rangers. But also you're gaining veterancy on your unit that will kill him. So if you shot him with a technical, if you get to vet two or vet three, and you're also stopping the combat drop. So it's a no-brainer to always be hitting the um always be hitting the rangers as well. If you can. Of course, sometimes there will be V's there and they'll lock your tech down and you won't be able to do anything. But yeah, otherwise you should be killing those rangers. Okay, pro tip number two is about clearing demo traps with a dozer. So you've probably seen this rarely before, but actually what you can do with a dozer is actually disable a demo trap. Probably a lot of times you've lost the dozer to a demo trap, but the trick is that the demo trap must be revealed. If the demo trap is revealed, press the L hotkey, go over to the demo trap, click on it, and you will disable or disarm or delete the demo trap. 
Okay, next pro tip, which you've probably seen me do on some streams before. Usually in free-for-alls and crazy 2v2v2 games, stuff like that, you can actually use a micro tank to disable either an enemy CC. When you've got a big big blob of units, you've pushed into their enemy base. They've not sold, you disable an enemy CC or disable their supply. Make sure you've got a ranger with you. So in this case, I'm just doing a ranger drop. And then you can actually uh, capture the enemy supply without them being able to sell. So they physically, when they click on it, they're not able to sell it. And they have no choice unless they stop your rangers or kill your microwave tanks. They're going to lose that supply. And then you're going to be able to all of a sudden build GLA. Modulating pulse width. Always prepared. I will work. Do not hurt me. I will try to I hurry. I will work. Okay, jumping into the next step, we've now got a Lotus and we've got the choice to either capture a supply or cash hack the supply. Now, if you capture a supply and he sells it, he gets a little bit of money back and sure, he has to rebuild it, which is going to cost him 2k. But if you do a cash hack instead, of which k is the hotkey for that, and then you steal $1,000, what that's actually doing is giving you $1,000 in your bank and taking $1,000 from his bank. So that's a difference of $2,000. That's a one cash act impact of $2,000. Now, the chances are as well, if you tuck it in a decent place, like, for example, right here, rotate the camera a little bit and try and just tuck it any way you can. Okay, it's not, it's not that hidden, but it's a little bit hidden, and especially if the guy's looking down here, he's not going to really see it on the minimap, and then go for the cash hack. You can probably cash hack... Two, three, four, even sometimes I've done it like 15 times until you get like a vet two Lotus. That's another difference of 2k. So you add that up, that's a difference of 4k in just the space of a few seconds there. Keep doing it and, to, and literally you love seeing me in games before, just keep cash hacking. Now the counter to this, if you do notice someone's cash hacking you and you haven't got any units nearby, is what that USA player should do then is spend all of his cash. So for example, let's say he's got 10k in the bank, you might queue up a load of Chinooks because they take a while to build and they're really expensive, so you might queue up a load of Chinooks. And if you've still got a little tiny bit of money left, then what you could do is maybe queue up a few Rangers as well. So let's say, I don't know, we're, let's say we're infantry, we're going to build a few tank guns until you've got your cash to zero, because then when he tries to cash hack, then he's only going to steal... Sure. He's only going to steal like the $65 or whatever's in your bank account until you've got more. And by that time, you may have then got a unit over there. So if you do see the cash hack, spend all of your cash quickly and then obviously cancel all those Chinooks. You don't want to build 95 Chinooks. Um, but like the, the main point is I would always prioritize cash hacking over stealing a building. Unless you're going for a key building like a CC. Sometimes you can do a pro tip. Another pro tip actually, which is capture, capture the CC. Enemy thinks he's safe if he's got a CC and he's got multiple dozers, but if you go and capture the CC and then come in with a couple of mix, pick off that dozer, and then all of a sudden he's got no dozer, you can dozer hunt a guy who thought he was very, very safe because he had a CC before. Just kind of loads of tips in one there, so yeah, tip number four. Okay, so final tip for today. We're here in a team game. We are playing as the GLA. Now, the situation is, I know we've got 40k in the bank here, but it's just an example. Let's say we're playing a GLA air game, for example, and your base is getting heavily wrecked. You're potentially going to get kicked from the game because your last building might die. And you're basically going to surrender and give your ally all of your stuff. It took me a very, very long time in Zero Hour to figure this out. Probably, maybe I've not had that scenario all that often, but it did take me a hell of a long time. What you actually want to do is before you surrender, you actually do want to evac your tunnel. Because if you surrender whilst your tunnel is full, then your ally will not gain any of those units. So yeah, like I said, if, you, if you're going to surrender, don't leave your tunnel full like that. As I found out playing with Excal once, I cost us a lot of the loss in a, in a big money decider. You actually want to uh, evac your tunnel and then press escape and press surrender. And then your ally will gain all of your units. Another pro tip whilst we're here is if you have actually all your units inside of your tunnel and you actually then lose your last tunnel. So let's say we lost that one and then we lost that one. If that's our last tunnel, we will lose all of those units inside. I don't think actually normally that would evac. I think if that tunnel dies, I think because I sold it there, they all just evac, which I've not actually seen before. But it's actually, if that tunnel died whilst all the units inside of it, the units die as well. So when you rebuild your tunnel, there's nothing, uh, nothing inside of it. So yeah, that's the pro tip. So today, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully it helps you on the battlefield. GG. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it or is there anything else I missed here or anything I got wrong or anything you want to add to it or any pro tips you want to see in the future. Let me know. GG and see you in the next one.